I read 10 books in the month of June in total and it was a month of ups and downs to be honest. <laughs> there were some really really good books in there and there were some books in there that were not so good. <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome back to my booktube channel Books with Leo and today I am doing my June wrap up video. I don't do monthly wrap ups, I just do wrap ups when I feel like them really. <laughs> so the last wrap up that I did before this one was my April wrap up and today I am back with a new one. It was a month of mixed opinions. So yeah, without any further ado, let's just get into the books that I read in the month of June. So I've got my iPad right here and I'm just going to use that to open my Goodreads to see what I read. This is how I start almost every wrap up because I rarely remember by myself what I read during any month. <laughs> That's a great trait for a booktuber to have really. I don't really have any stats for you guys because I'm not that organised but I do want to mention that I've read 76 books of so far this year which is a lot. I think last year I read 85 in total so I'm ahead of myself. <laughs> the first book that I read this month was Treasure by Rebecca Weatherspoon. Um, this is the cover. So Treasure by Rebecca Weatherspoon is a female female romance um, following two girls who are both in technical college or a technical education-ish thing and one of them is Alexis and she goes with her sister's bachelorette party to a stripping place and there she meets stripper Treasure also known as Trisha and they really like each other and then they start to hang out and to date and yeah they fall in love. <laughs> this is a really good book, I loved it. Um, it is a female female romance but it also dives into mental health and into themes of how important it is to have a good and open communication within relationships and I thought that was just really beautiful and this story was heartwarming, super funny, swoon worthy, everything you could possibly want in a romance to be honest and I rated this book five stars um, so yeah I would probably recommend it to anybody and like I already said when I mentioned this book in my mid-year book freakout tag it was such a big surprise to me because I am so used to not really being that into romance books so when I was into this romance book I was just like so flabbergasted and super surprised so yeah that was a great thing to find out about myself this year that I do like romance. The second book that I read this month was The Secret of Whitestone Gate written by Julia Noble. This is the second book in the Black Hollow Lane series um, and Black Hollow Lane is basically a children's series about a girl with a famous mother who's famous for She's like sort of Jodie Foster of America, I think. I, I'm not sure. Is Jodie Foster American? I don't know. I think she's British. Don't know. Anyway, so a whole different tangent. So this book is about Emmeline, Emmy. It's about this girl whose mom is famous for parenting tips and parenting advice and um, so she gets shipped off by her mom who is famous for parenting but who is to be honest not the best parent ever. She gets shipped off to a boarding school in England and she is American herself but her dad was English but she never met her dad um, and at this boarding school she makes friends, she discovers the school, she gets to play soccer which is her favourite thing in the whole wide world and she also discovers a great secret because this school is not just any boarding school it appears to be that there's a secret society within the school and so this sort of, to be honest, this middle grade book to me felt like sort of a mixture of Harry Potter and Ninth House but for children and I just thought that was amazing it was really really lovely um, super funny as well I love funny books when they're witty one of the main characters Lola she's my favorite person ever especially in the first book which is called The Mystery of Black Hollow Lane um, Lola is just such a fun character so feisty and fierce and yeah this second book was also a lot of fun these are very short books you can get through them really quickly and there are loads of fun uh, the audiobooks are also really good I did enjoy the first audiobook a lot more than the second because it had a different narrator which is such a like that icks me so bad <laughs> um, but yeah this was a really fun book and I'm glad that I picked it up in June I guess I was really in a middle grade mood because after that I picked up A Murder Most Unladylike by Robin Stevens and this is also set at a boarding school but this book is about two girls Hazel Wong and Daisy Wells who are best friends and go to Deep Dean's school for girls together and um, Hazel discovers a body one afternoon of one of their teachers and from there on they start a sort of detective mystery trying to solve the case. 
I didn't like this book. This was one of my least favourite reads that I read this month. I thought it would be funny, lighthearted, but there was a lot of things in this book that really rubbed me the wrong way. First off, uh, Robin Stevens is a white author and the main character of this book is Asian, which could possibly be fine, depends what your stance is on that. Um, I personally am not sure if it's a good idea to let white people write POC um, perspectives. Uh, I think we should let them tell their own stories themselves. Of course, it's good to have better representation, but who better to make that representation than the people themselves? But you know, I'm white. My opinion is not the most important and there's loads of people with loads of different opinions on this. Um, you might think right now that I'm being super annoying and so politically correct, but this is just something that I find important. So it's a part of my channel. But Hazel, throughout this book, who's the main character, who's Asian, she's from Hong Kong, um, she gets picked on so badly all the time and so many racist remarks and things keep happening to her where people just tell her like, we're not savages here in England and we don't do that here like that, even though she's not doing anything wrong. And even her best friend, Daisy Wells, maybe she might be the worst of them because she, she's like this perfect English girl. And the way she treats Hazel is so horrible. Like, she walks all over Hazel, um, so that's kind of a toxic friendship, if you ask me. Um, so yeah, and it, it's not confronted enough within the book, so if I would have read this as a child, I would have thought that this was normal behaviour. And of course, this is a historical story, so like, within the time frame, it would be a logical thing for Hazel to be bullied because of where she comes from. That does not mean it's right, though, and that does not mean the writer shouldn't have confronted it more within the story. I know a lot of you might think right now, like, oh my god, Leora, this is a children's book, what are you worried about? Well, I'm worried about children reading this and getting wrong ideas from it. The racism was just too annoying for me to really enjoy this book. The next book that I read during the month of June is Slay by Brittany Morris, and I did really, really enjoy Slay. I don't want to talk about Slay too much in this wrap-up because I talked for like 10 minutes about Slay in my last vlog, so if you are very curious to hear my thoughts on this book, then definitely check out the vlog, I don't know where it is. I just thought Slay was such a good book. It was like, I had had so many reads before Slay where I was just like mildly annoyed, like for example the last read, and Slay was like a fresh breath of air and it was just so good. Slay is about Kiera who has developed this game that is only for black people, that's like a safe space for black um, virtual reality game players where they can all come together and be safe and not get and not hear any racial slurs and they can like honor black community and black culture and this is all great and well but then somebody gets murdered over currency within the game i think so somebody gets murdered in real life because of um, a fight that they had with somebody about currency within the game um, and then the game gets very well known it gets on the news a lot of people are saying it's racist because it, you cannot be within the game if you're a white person so everybody is upset all the white people are upset and then even some sort of troll enters the game who's supposedly white and who just messes everything up and yeah this book is really wonderful because it felt like it was partly fantasy because the game is a sort of more fantasy setting so technically it's um, contemporary but it read as a fantasy. Um, Kiara is a wonderful main character. She's such a smart, inventive, amazing young woman. This book really just celebrated black joy whilst also discussing some really important topics surrounding race and racism and especially the chapters that were about um, her friends and like the microaggressions that they showed sometimes were really insightful to me and really well done I thought especially like of course I cannot speak of the rep in this book because I'm not black um, but I just thought it was very like I can imagine if you're younger and you have black friends and you might have said some very awful things if you read this you would be like oh right that is not a good thing it is a bad thing if I ask my black friend like can I do cornrows <laughs> I thought that was really well done and I just really enjoyed this book overall because the story is also so engaging so yeah I really loved Slay by Brittany Morris and yeah that's all I have to say about it. <laughs> Ended up talking about it anyway. Then the next book I read in the month of June is Odd One Out by Nick Stone. So I talked about Odd One Out in detail in my reading vlog as well. Um, and Odd One Out is about Juniper, who's gay, Ray, who's questioning, and Courtney, who's straight. And they're basically the best of friends and they are sort of in a love triangle slash love star because they're all in love with each other. This could have ended up a polyamorous relationship, but it didn't. And there were some things in this book that sort of 
annoyed me like there was some biphobia there was some cheating and just some weird emotional things going on within the book at the same time there was a lot of valuable discourse and conversation within the book about discovering your sexuality and figuring out who you are and giving yourself that space to figure it all out um especially some of the chapters about like really close friendship and girls just being like confused about what they feel for each other it was really relatable <laughs> to me so i gave it a three and a half stars i enjoyed it i think there's other nick stein books that i would like better so yeah but i am really glad that i picked up this book in june now for the next book what else did i read oh right then i reread hello vitamensa by anusha nazume um translated this would be hello white people um this is a book about racism in the netherlands and about all the different things of like the different microaggressions and things that happen within the netherlands having to do with racism and this is just a great book i read it once when i was in college and i thought it was really good back then but now with everything happening and with me wanting to continue speaking out and speaking up and do it better um, to explain things to my family and friends as well and like get them to see that this happens in our country as well. I really wanted to pick this book up again so I read it again so I can explain everybody around me in detail <laughs> why racism is not over yet in the Netherlands. Um, I wish it was but it's not. This is a really great book. Um, if you guys would like to sign petitions against Black Pete or donate to trans charities within the Netherlands that's obviously possible I've got some links down below would love for you to check those out and yeah keep educating yourself and if you are Dutch then this is definitely a book for you to check out because there are lots of great insights within this book and Anusha Nazume is also an amazing writer who's really funny so yeah definitely check this book out the next book I read in June is You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson I love this book. I loved, oh my god, don't know what I did. But I do know that I love this book a lot. It is about Lizzie who has, whose mum has died of sickle cell disease and her brother is also ill with the same disease. And she really, really, really wants to go to this school that her mum went to or her mum's dream was also to go there. Liz really really wants to go to this school so she's always been an A plus student because she needs to get a scholarship and then her whole world sort of collapses around her when she learns that she did not get the scholarship. She and her friends come up with a plan to make Liz become prom queen and with the money that she can win from becoming prom queen she can afford to go to this school. But then there's this really cute girl that's Liz's rival that's also running for prom queen and yeah they turn out to be both queer and to kind of like each other so this book is also a female female romance it was one of my favorite books that i've read in a long time it was just so heartwarming to see queer girls and also a queer black girl have a happy ending amazing loved it um also the writing was amazing it was fluffy cute but also had some important themes in there and yeah i just really loved this book the audio book was also really good um alaska something voiced it and Oh, I just loved every second of it so I would recommend this book to anybody as well and I also talked about this book a bit more in depth in my mid-year book freak out tag so definitely check that out if you want to know more but this was definitely one of my favorite reads of June and I gave it five stars so yeah what else did I read what else did I read right I read this book ba 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 I read The Celestine Prophecy by James Redfield. This book was gifted to me by my father. Thank you, Dad. Um, this is one of my dad's favorite books. It's one of the books that are really special to him and he wanted me to read it, so I did. <laughs> it took me a really long time, considering normally I read fairly quickly, but this took me about like three months to get through, I think. This is a very spiritual book. It's about a man who goes to Peru. He goes on a sort of adventure there to discover a manuscript that holds spiritual insights within it. And that's what this book is about. So it's sort of fictionalized, but it's mostly about the spiritual insights within the book. I didn't rate this book because I don't really know how to, to be honest. I thought it was really interesting and mostly it was just very valuable to me because my dad gifted it to me and I love to be able to sort of share a story with him. So yeah, I don't know what to say about this book, but thank you dad and I really enjoyed reading this and I can't wait to talk to you about it. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> I gifted my dad a little life, so that's what he's reading currently. So I can't wait to find out how he likes that. <laughs> I think it's going to be so sad. <laughs> the next book that I read in June was A While the Light Lasts by Agatha Christie. This is a bundle up of four 
or five, nine. Okay, so th these are nine short stories by Agatha Christie. I thought it were less, but okay, apparently nine. Um, I really, really enjoyed this book, but at the same time, it's really a product of its time. Like, there's a lot of racism and sexism and ableism happening within this book. Um, yeah, but at the same time, it was written a long time ago, and I must say, I do most of the time really enjoy Agatha Christie's writing but I did enjoy this book less than I have enjoyed any of her other books like I've read books by Agatha Christie before that I really enjoyed that were so smart and like the plot was so amazing and none of these stories really grabbed me like that so I think I gave it two stars um, I must say these are also some of Agatha Christie's most early stories I think so yeah I don't know they were a bit too dramatic for me I think even though I love a bit of drama but they just didn't I don't know didn't they weren't that special to me so I'm sorry if there's any Agatha Christie fans out there <laughs> this one just wasn't it and I gave it two stars then the last book that I read this month is one that I finished today and I enjoyed this book so much um and that is The Haunting of Tremcar 015 written by P. Jelly Clark. This is one of my new favorite fantasy books. It was so, 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 so good. <laughs> so I don't know if I could explain this properly myself, so I'm just going to read what it says here to explain to you guys what this book is about. The Haunting of Tremcar 015 returns to the alternate Cairo of Clark's short fiction where humans live and work alongside otherworldly beings. The Ministry of Alchemy, Enchantments and Supernatural Entities handles the issues that can arise between the magical and the mundane. Sir Senior Agent Hamed Al Nasir shows his new partner, Agent Auntsy, the ropes of the investigation when they are called to subdue a dangerous, possessed tram car. What starts off as a simple matter of exorcism, however, becomes more complicated as the origins of the demon inside are revealed. This was definitely my favourite, favourite, favourite book of this month. I think I would give it six stars if it were possible, so I am giving it six stars because this is my video and I can do whatever I want. Um, P. Jelly Clark is amazing. I love... I love his writing. It is so funny. It is so witty. It is so gripping. It's so engaging. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same. I feel like that Lady Gaga video where she's just like, amazing, show-stopping. I feel like that's me right now. <laughs> Especially the way that the Ministry of Alchemy and Magic and whatever it's called um, got sort of mixed up with the women's movement in Cairo was so cool because there was so much feminism in this book and it was amazing to also see that from a perspective that is not Western. And yeah, it was just so good. I loved it. Especially one of the female characters named Alba, who constantly kept calling the agents spooky boys, was just like so hilarious to me. So if you like writers like Neil Gaiman and you like The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, I highly urge you to check out P. Jelly's work because I really think you would enjoy his writing as well. It is so great. And yeah, I don't know. It's Oh, I loved it. I loved it so much. I've said that like 20 times now, but yeah, I really enjoyed this book. The audio book was also really good. So yeah, I'd recommend that as well. <laughs> and now to wrap this wrap up up, the book that I'm currently reading is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I am not that far into it. As you can see, this book is so thick. Um, I am using my own new bookmark though. So look at that. <laughs> Don't have a lot of thoughts on this yet, but I am fairly sure that I'll love it. So yeah go me. <laughs> I'll probably talk about that one in one of my upcoming wrap-ups. So yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, you enjoyed listening to everything that I read in June, and yeah, I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye!